Welcome back. In the previous section, we explored how to work with data from various sources. We now start with section 4, entitled Statistics with Julia. In this section, we will learn how to use the most common statistical and visualization techniques with Julia's statistical packages, such as stats base, distributions, hypothesis tests, and gadfly. The techniques are applied to our well known IRIS database. To get a good overview of what Julia has to offer in this field, visit the Julia Stats website at juliastats.org or this website, github.com forward slash juliastats. Now we move on to the first video of this section that deals with common statistical techniques to get more insight into your dataset. In this video, we talk about the basic statistical functions you need to get first insights in a dataset. We continue to explore our IRIS dataset. If necessary, you can import it with read table from our data file. To quickly summarize the data and get an insight into them, we have the describe function at our disposal, which calculates a number of statistical measures for each column. The information given depends on the column type as shown here. For the numerical column, like sepal length, we get the minimum 4.3 and maximum 7.9. Also, the mean or average 5.84. And the median 5.8 is given, as well as the first and third quartiles, Q1 and Q3. Because the mean and median lie very close to each other, we can derive that for sepal length, there are no atypical small or high values or outliers. We also get the number and percentage of NA values. For a string column, we only get NA information, the length, as well as the number of unique values. To see this on a single column, use the summary stats function. Minimum and maximum can be called separately. Extrema returns them both as a tuple. There exists also separate functions for the basic statistical metrics, such as mean, length, for the number of measurements or samples, median, STD for standard deviation, and VAR for variance. If the samples have severe outliers, you could trim these off. For example, we can calculate the mean by taking off 5% from each end with trim mean. All these and many more functions, like z-scores and entropy, exist in the package stats base. The IQR, interquartile range, is the difference between Q1 and Q3, and is in itself a good measure of the spread. The minimum, Q1, median, Q3, and maximum are also given by the quantile function. Another easy way to get the distribution of a feature's values is the hist function. Its result is a tuple. The first element is the range and corresponds to the edges of the histogram bins. Here, from 4.0 to 8.0, with a bin size of 0.5. The second element is the frequency vector. It denotes the number of items in each bin, so there are, for example, five measurements lying between 4.0 and 4.5, and so on. Count map gives us, for every sample value, the number of times it occurs. As such, it is better suited for categorical features, such as species in our case. Proportion map gives us the relative proportions or weights of each category. Each of the iris species is equally represented. The skewness is a measure of the asymmetry in the value distribution, while the kurtosis is a measure of the tailedness of the distribution. The kurtosis is negative here, so we have a low peak with wide wings. If you don't need that many decimals, use the round function as shown here. To see if there is a statistical linear relationship, or dependence between two or more variables or observed data values, we use the correlation coefficient, core. 
core ranges between minus 1 and plus 1. The extreme values indicate a perfectly linear relationship, while a correlation close to 0 indicates the absence of a linear relationship. Commonly, a status of weak is assigned to values between 0 0.1 and 0 0.3, moderate to the range of 0 0.3 to 0 0.5, and strong to values above 0 0.5. We see that sepal width and sepal length are not correlated, but sepal length and petal length are strongly correlated. A measure of how two variables change together is given by the covariance. If the greater values of one variable mainly correspond with the greater values of the other variable, and the same holds for the smaller values, in other words, the variables tend to show similar behaviour. The covariance is positive. In the opposite case, the variables tend to show opposite behaviour, and the covariance is negative. Julia calculates this with COV function. We see that Julia offers a wide range of statistical measures to apply to our dataset, ranging from calculation of extrema and quartiles to histograms, value maps, and asymmetry and relationship measurements.